Ron Good evening, Garner. Lori. Well, what Ron a beautiful day. Garner. I'm your host, and I am. Ron Garner. Between Ron Ben and Ron Garner. <laughs> Yes, indeed. This is Between Terminas here on ON TV. I'm your host, Anthony Termina. And Ron I've got Garner. Sammy and Ian here. This Ron Garner. Gentlemen, what are we doing? I've been wondering that for about six years now. I've been wondering that for about three years now because of this guy. Because not listening to my guarantees. What are your guarantees? I guaranteed to you last year that Ron Garner would be the new manager of the Detroit Tigers. You said that five years ago. Yeah, and look where he is now. <laughs> little late, Sally. Little late. Little late? Yeah. You're not really the manager of the Tigers. Well, you're a little late on your prediction. Okay, so let's talk about something that is of interest. The Lions and their coaching search. So what do you guys think about the Lions coaching search? <coughs> like? If we don't get Patricia now, I'm going to be a little upset. i got to be honest with you. Why? Uh, you know, he seemed like he's pretty uh, the next guy. To me. Okay. Just from the limited information I know. <laughs> well. And, and if New York thinks that highly of him, that's got to lead me to believe he's probably worth it. He's a Bob Quinn guy for starters, but, you know, I think the Lions are going to take a stupid route here. You know, I mean, I think there's two candidates that I think that could be named the next coach of the Lions. And one of them, his name is Josh McDaniels. No. Another Patriot disciple. No. Yeah, he was the offensive coordinator, yeah. Did we interview him? Lions interview him? I don't know if they interviewed him. But another guy that I think would be very interesting would be Minnesota's offensive coordinator, Pat Shermer. I I actually agree with you. Pat Shermer, I think, would be a better coach for this team than Patricia. Because here's why. I disagree. Here's why. What 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 does Shermer bring to the Lions? Offense. Offense. He brings, he is has a commitment to run the football. Look at Minnesota. You know what I mean? They had three backs that uh, had great seasons, you know, for Minnesota. And let's not forget, they won the NFC North with the third string quarterback. I think that's the more impressive stat, and that they are the number two overall seed in the NFC. Mm hmm. So I'm telling you, Ian. The well, defense, you can't discredit that defense. No, you can't discredit but that defense. Their offense is quite good. Yeah, their offense was very good. You know, the Lions have a quarterback in there. They have a quarterback. They have wide receivers. You know, the only concern that I have about them is the running game and, of course, the offensive line health issues. Mm -hmm. And then their defense was God be on awful. It wasn't that bad. Well, let's see. You don't when you don't have a defensive line. Don't you line think the Lions present? need to fix the defense, gentlemen? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, defensive line especially. The um, line is bad. Line is bad. Tamir Whitehead. Linebackers. Uh, Khalil Whitehead's got to go. Well, he's a he's a free agent. And then you need to address your your secondary. You know, besides especially weak side of Darius Slay. I think you got three <laughs> good pieces in the secondary. I think the secondary Former is the strength Quinn. of the defense. Light. Quinn Slay. Slay. Diggs mm-hmm. uh, showed me something at safety. Okay. So you don't think the Lions need to fix that, that that situation? Not those three guys. You still might need another corner. Need another corner. And uh, you got to figure out what you're doing with Miles Killebrew. Right. Uh, I like him. Where are you fitting him in? Diggs, Tabor, mm-hmm. Lawson. Yep. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, the problem that I have for Detroit Lions. I mean, it was for Lions, very it bad. It was very bad. I mean, you don't have a true defense. And no pass rush. You have no pass rush. You have no um, no run stop. You no know, run stoppers. I mean, like, you know. Did you bring back Nada? No. Why? Because. Why? Too old. You could bring him back for a song, though. And he's yeah. a good mentor. Yeah, but he's not he healthy all the time. Here. No, he's not. He's but not what healthy. if he's. Well, if he wants to be here, I mean, why can't. If he wants know. to be here, then why not? I mean. You bring him in on first and second down, get him off the field and third down. Yeah. You know, I, just to come stop the run. Why not? I mean, 
you look at next year, you know, I think the division will be much better because, you know, with the addition of the draft, then you're going to have a... Um, well, Aaron Rodgers is back, and I think the coach in mm -hmm. Chicago, mm -hmm. the Kansas City guy. I like that hire. That was a good hire. I think it was a great hire. That was a good hire. You know, I think it was a good hire. Mitchell Trubisky was not as bad as I expected him to be. He actually he, did better than you think. And they have a real good running game. Right. Yeah. And their defense, eh. Defense. But they're young. They're a young yeah, team. Yeah, they're young. The Bears are. They're a young team. But I, yeah. but I give them credit where credit's for. Mm -hmm. um, the Lions, they need a lot of work. You they know? need a lot of help. And their schedule next year. Their it's schedule brutal. is brutal. It's bad. It's because they got to play New England, Dallas. San Francisco is going to be better. better. Um, Miami, Miami, who knows what they're going to be. Oh, my God. It's going to be um, tough. Be interesting. Be interesting. So they're going to have to really toughen up. Yeah, so, I mean, the per the Patricia hire was one I was excited about. Why are you excited about it? From what I read about him and his <laughs> pedigree, um, seems like a guy that would help any franchise, but especially the Lions, because he comes from a place where accountability is your number one well, Let's not forget who leaves New England and jo why Josh McDaniels fails in Denver. You yeah. know, because yeah. when he left New England, you know what I mean? I think they hired him too soon. You think they hired him too soon? He got a job too quick. Why? Why do you think he <clears throat> came back? Belichick obviously well, trusts him. Well, because Bill O'Brien left. He did. Yeah, yeah, he left, and yeah. then he was due though. Well, Bill O'Brien, I thought had He's more a, advanced in his career. Bill O'Brien had a nice career at Penn State, and yeah. then and then I don't know why he left Penn State to go um, to Houston. Money. Wanted to get in the show, man. Money. That was terrible. Hey, you want to be you want to be an NFL coach? So go, so team. do you guys think the Lions contend for the division? No. <sighs> no. Green Bay's in that division. Minnesota. They're still going to be very good. You don't think Green Bay's going to be rebuilding? Yeah, no. Green Bay's kind of a mess. Yeah, Green Bay's kind of. They have a quarterback. They do. Minnesota's got, An of course, quarterback. Minnesota's got Dalvin Cook. They do. They got a young team. Young. And they have, and you have three they got guys. A you have crisis. three guys. Yeah, but it's a good way to have, it's a good way. They're in a good situation. I mean, they could trade one of those quarterbacks, you know what I mean, too. Basically, you know, get a very good player, very high traffic in return. I don't know if Sam Bradford signed after this year. I have no idea. But, but no, one, all three of those guys. You have Case there. Keenum, yeah. Teddy Bridgewater, and then you have, um, and then yeah, Sam Bradford. You know what I mean? But is Bridgewater what? willing to play backup? No. No. Probably not. Probably not. So, is Bradford willing to play backup? Maybe. Maybe. So he do gets you hurt a lot. Do you trade Teddy Bridgewater? Maybe. I would. And what would you trade him to? Uh, Jimmy Spin Go the Cleveland. wheel. Cleveland. Cleveland. Now that Deshaun would be Tyler, that would be dangerous. That would be very scary because you put Teddy Bridgewater and Deshaun the first Ty. and the fourth pick overall, so they mm -hmm. don't have to spend a pick on a quarterback. No. If you go in there with Teddy. <laughs> And Kaiser. But they do have Deshaun Kaiser, so I'm going to say. Does Teddy Bridgewater command a first-round pick, though, a top-four pick? No. Maybe. Maybe. I mean, well, if there's a team that needs a quarterback right now. There's a lot of there's teams. There's a lot of teams that need a quarterback. Did you see the Jacksonville-Buffalo game? Yes. Yes. Both teams need a quarterback. Holy mackerel. I've, I've never see, seen a worse quarterback I could see. than Blake Bortles. Oh, man. Until Nathan Peterman came in. Holy yep. mackerel. Hey, gentlemen, what do you think about the Cleveland Browns going 0-16? And, and they hit through a parade about that. Who cares? Hi. Yeah, it was the saddest moment of your life. <laughs> Why? I didn't spare a thought to it. Who cares? I mean, Hi. it was the saddest moment. But then again, I do agree with you, Ian, on the quarterback situation. I do think, I do think Teddy Bridgewater is going to Jacksonville next year. Seriously. Eli Manning might be going to Jacksonville. You think Eli Manning's going to you Jacksonville? You think Eli's leaving New York after, oh, after yeah. how they treated him? Yeah. yeah, how they treat him? Yeah. They I treated him. They have the number two pick. Eli Manning should go. Yeah, I agree. Eli Manning should go to Jacksonville. Be with his buddy Tom Coughlin. Yeah, be with Tom Coughlin. They'll probably they got a stellar defense. Yeah, they'll re probably restore the roar back down there in Jacksonville. And then, well, I, that's all they need. But I think, but I think, te but I think Teddy Bridgewater is going to Buffalo next year. So you're saying you're going to Jacksonville, then you go to Buffalo, make up your mind. What about Miami? No. 
What about? Um, Do they have Ryan Tannehill? What about Arizona? Yeah, Arizona is a possibility. What would Min Arizona give to Minnesota? I don't know. Picks. They could give. Um, well, they do. They're interested. I think it's Arizona. I think season. Arizona. I think Arizona's got a quarterback, and his name is Drew Stanton. Drew Stanton, I think, is going to be. He's okay for them. I think <laughs> he's okay. He's okay. Yeah. He's okay. That's not why you play the game. It's from okay guy. He's I could be, go be okay somewhere. Well, at least Derek Carr's going to have a big year fantasy-wise because he's got John Gruden as the head coach now. What's your take about John Gruden being the next coach at Oakland? He's not the same coach as he was back when he was a youngster. I think he should have stayed in the booth. You, you, so, you both, so you both think, so you both are nays. I, I don't get why they're so, they're going to give him that man $100 million. Why would they give years? him $100 million for 10 years? What is that? That's I think nearly, it's the haircut thing. What is that? That is Davis and Gruden both have the same That's ten million haircut. a season. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Any final thoughts on NFL football? It's crazy. Go Saints. It's crazy, but you know what? I think at the end of the day, um, don't be surprised if there's an upset this weekend in the playoff. In the Titans over Patriots. I got the no steel. Way. I got the Jags upset Pittsburgh. There is no. Way. I got I got Pittsburgh no getting way. upset by Jacksonville. There's no way. And then in the NFC, Blake Bortles is so bad. It's so bad. What he is, is they, so what, bad. They beat Pittsburgh and Pittsburgh early in the year. Ben threw five picks. You think Ben's gonna throw five picks in a home playoff he game? He could against that defense. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. All right. With Antonio Brown being limited. All right, we'll be right back with Between Tier Minas on O1 TV. Hey, it's Owen TV here. Now, have you ever had the urge to create your own TV show? Or you just wanted to see what goes behind the scenes of making a TV program? Well, Owen TV has just the program for you. Owen TV offers studio and field production classes that allow you to take control and create the programs the way you want them to be. We will introduce you to media literacy skills and the fundamentals of program production in order to acquire the basic training needs for ONTV equipment use. To get started, all you have to do is sign up for a free ONTV orientation where you will learn all about ONTV and all the opportunities available to our volunteers, as well as meet the ONTV staff and take a tour of our facility. After that, you can register for one of our production courses. Both the studio and field production courses are only $10 for Lake Orion residents and $25 for non-residents. For more information about Owen TV's production classes, feel free to call us at 248-393-1060 or go to orionontv.org and click register now to sign up for classes. We hope to see you soon. Welcome back to Between Tier Minas here on ONTV. Gentlemen, how are we doing? <laughs> All right. All right. Okay, so let's talk about um, a sensitive subject for both of you guys. Empty seats at the Little Caesars Arena. Was it a waste to have the arena at the Little Caesars Arena, or was it a great investment? Because you're seeing all these empty seats at Pistons games, at Red Wing games, I mean, what is your take about the empty seats? You know who I blame for that? City of Detroit. Because there's a reason why there's plenty of empty seats. Because these fans, they don't want to go downtown, pay taxes to them. You know what I mean? Because I think there's like a fee that they got to charge that the city of Detroit charges for that. So Are you talking about the parking fees? Mm, yeah, parking fees. But I think there's like... Athletes have to pay like a certain amount of taxes and their salaries to the city of Detroit. It's not much. It's not much. It's not much. You're lying. It's not much. You're lying. But I'm saying the reason why there's a lot of empty seats is because, yeah, there's a lot to do downtown. I get that. But when you look at the situation, how it's unfolded, you got to look at, okay, why is my product failing? on the court. You have two failing teams that are failing right now. Uh, one on the ice and one on the basketball court. You know, the one on the ice, we know that was going to fail. And then the one on the basketball court had a really nice start, but 
but they have fallen right back to earth, basically like the Titanic sinking down the ship. So I'm telling you guys, the reason why, and let's not forget, they have overpriced food over there. It's, they have to cut down on the prices if they want to be competitive. Ian, what's your take? I'll agree with that last point. <coughs> Stuff's expensive there. Yes, it is. Tickets are expensive. Very there. expensive. Having been to the stadium. I've been there too. You know. One time. Yeah. I've been there once. Yeah. Um, where did you sit? I was in section 16. 112. 112. Okay. Portal 16? No, section 112. Oh, well, it's 16 then. 112. It's their sec their section. I, you said sec 16. Section 112. Well, there's portals and there's sections. Whatever. I sat in the upper deck, okay? There's this cool little uh, gondola thing mm -hmm. that goes around, right? It's yeah. kind of like a suite. You can be up, you're over the court, you're over the ice. It's neat. Well, guess what? The people in the upper row can't see the big screen because of this hunk of steel hanging around. It's a weird thing. It's a weird it feels weird there. It does. It, I feel it, it is colorful, though. Very, quite colorful. It's nice. It's the nice. Red, blue, it yellow, feels the there's no there's no soul in there, though. It's not the Joe Louis Arena. It's not even the Palace where championships have been won. You know? Mm -hmm. No. It, that and that, you know, that's gonna come with time, but it feels a little corporate. It's corporate because it feels a little stuffy. It's stuffy. It's corporate because when you look at and your products are failing. The products are very bad. They're not good. The Red Wings and the Pistons are not good. It feels like, you know, it feels like if you're like a business elite or a worker that makes a lot of money, I mean, it, it, you want to appeal to the, to like the, the, the consumer, somebody that, is, that doesn't make a lot of money or even technically that's poor or, you know, that will be willing to go to a game and it just does not feel like to me that the Little Caesars Arena is, it, it doesn't feel like, it doesn't feel like the palace. It does not feel like Joe Louis Arena where you, you have, you have every, all social classes go attend those arenas. You just don't have that feeling going to Little Caesars. It feels like you have to either have a lot of money or you have to be quote elite if you want to go to Little Caesars Arena or unless you save a lot of money to go there. And it's just like, you know, it costs so much to go. I mean, in the city of Detroit, you have to pay parking fees of like 15, 20, sometimes between 35, 45 dollars. I mean, it's just not very many people have that type of money. And it's just like, you know, it, it, it feels like it That explains it feels the like, empty seats. You know, it might explain the empty seats. That explains the empty seats. Because when you look at, it needs to be appeasing for everybody. It has to be. Yeah, I agree with. It. I agree with Anthony like Wright. That. I agree with Anthony Head up. Well, it's a common town. It's a it common needs to be town. A common arena for the common yeah, man. It's a common town. Com it's for supposed the to be. Should it's be? supposed yeah. to be. No, it's it not. It should be, but it's not because right. you have a group of elites. You have a group. I mean, it's basically, it's basically the reason why you have the empty seats is because, it's because you know people can't afford it. Two day expense and the team is not. And good then you have two teams that are just not terrible. Good. You know, the Detroit Red Wings, they're not good. You know, and then the Detroit Pistons had a nice start. They're going back down to earth. I think I'll make some changes there. Both these teams have got to make changes. But Years I mean, the point, the point is, is that, you know, you need to have an arena that appeals to everyone. And I don't think the organizers of the Little Caesars Arena had that idea in mind. I mean, especially with it going into downtown <laughs> where, you know, if you're the consumer traveling north, I mean, it doesn't have that feeling with the palace. Like, with the, when you had the palace, you don't have to pay parking. You did. You, well, I mean, it wasn't to the extent that, you know, it wasn't to the extent. It was as far it was, away and as expensive. And, and, then, and then at Joe Louis Arena, yeah, you had to, but it, it did not have that feeling because it was such a legendary building. And, and it, it, just, it just, to me, feels like it's like, you know, the it feels like it's elite. It's for people that wear suits. It's for people that wear, um, you know, and that's not the type of guy I want to be. And I don't think, you know, it, it just feels like it's for, you know, 
I mean, out of the social classes. It's just, it, it just feels like that it's not for the common man, and it should be for One the man, common, common man. One man, common woman. Common man, common woman. I mean, mm-hmm. like, it just does not feel like that. It, 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 I mean, that's just my feeling on it. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's what I got out of my experience when I went to, um, I mean, I, I had fun. I had a lot of fun. I got, s- I was with the family, and I and um, got, I had a fun. When saw I was a nice Joel. Red Wings win. No, I saw Oakland, Michigan State game. That was a great game. Okay. Mm-hmm. And but um, but I just had that feeling where you're looking down and you see those courtside seats. Yeah, it feels like that it's elite, you know, and you know it's it, it's kind of like why. You know, it's like, why do you, you know, and then you're looking at, I mean, everybody else is sitting there. I mean, and, the, and those tickets were not cheap. No. Those tickets were not cheap. So no. it's like, you know, you're looking down there and you're seeing, it's like, you know, why can't they just do that for everybody? Well, I hope in time I doubt they it. will see the amount I of empty it. seats and they'll realize, hey, there's a reason why nobody's going down. We got to get people in the door. They got to readjust their pricing. They got to readjust and, their pricing. Um, I think another thing that's going to help Not is, make it feel so elite. Right. I think another thing that might help with that is everything that is supposedly supposed to go on around there with restaurants and whatever shopping and just the whole area is supposed to be, you know, different, built up. Um, I don't perhaps that will help. I don't think it's what it's supposed to be down there. You know, I, I, I'm just just disappointed with that district down there. I really am. Well, I think you got to give it some time. I mean, they, they open the arena pretty quickly, um, and you need time to fill in. And the product, and the, both those products there stink. Well, you want to get into that. Pistons are bad. Yeah. They do not look good for the future. Wings no. are bad. They don't look good for the future. Nope. And it's a shame. And they got a clean house. Seems like mismanagement a little I've bit. I've been begging Tom Gores to freaking sell to somebody who has a passion instead of somebody who has a business, who's a business clown. I actually I wish the Pistons would be just going back to the palace because, I mean, that's a beautiful building, to be honest with you. Tom and he Gores put a lot of money into why. that. And, you know, Tom Gores is the reason why they're downtown. He's a business clown for it. Mm-hmm. He's a joke to society. That's what Tom Gores is. He's not a basketball guy. That's no, he's sure. not. All right, so any, any final thoughts on this subject? like a Cedric the Entertainer. That's what he is. Any final thoughts on the subject? Um, I wish the Pistons would sell Andre, Reggie, Tobias, Avery for picks, expiring contracts, young assets. And the Red Wings should have done it a long time ago. Ben? They should hire Detroit. The Red Wings should hire Steve Lazarus as their GM. No kidding. That's what I think has to happen. No kidding. And I wish, and I wish the entire thing about Detroit would change because, in, in terms of social class and everything like that, I wish the more of the common man would come in there. Well, so Detroit in ten years. We'll see. We'll see. We'll, see. we'll be right back in between Timmy and Hanoi TV. <laughs> Hello Lake Orion, it's Anthony Terramina, co-host of Between Terraminas. I want to let you know of a new show called History Now. In it, we're going to talk about global, national, and political events that occur in our lifetime. We're going to also have guests and also have co-hosts as well, and also plenty of surprises. Catch us on History Now here on ONTV. Hello, Oakland County. This is Sammy Termina talking OA now. In it, we'll talk various stories from reigning from the state to Oakland County teams affecting the OAA. Catch us here on OA now. Between Termina, if you're on ONTV, I'm your host, Anthony Termina. Gentlemen, how are we doing? Yes, sir. Very good. Hang it. You're looking nice as always. I try. I got to get some weight loss for 2018, but it works. Hey, we got New Year resolutions. What do you think is going to happen? So, Ian, what you think about 2018? What do what I think is going to happen? What's your New Year's resolution for 2018? What do you think is going to happen? Is it what I want to do or what I think is going to happen? What do you think is going to happen? Both. 
All right, here's something I want to, I've been percolating with a little bit. The Tiger. Yeah. I don't think they're going to finish in last place. I'm going to disagree with you. Central. I'm going to disagree with you. I think they made a nice hire in the uh, pitching coach. I think Matthew Boyd went into last year, uh, went into the offseason on a bit of a high note, nearly throwing a no-hitter. Okay. And I think him and Norris can take steps up. I think it's not out of the realm of possibility for Zimmerman to not be absolutely pathetic. He's been worse than bad for two years. But I'm in. And then you got your Michael Fulmer. In. You got Mike Fires trying to build up. In. (laughs) Stock. I don't think the Tigers are going to be as bad as everyone thinks. Stop it. I'm telling you right now, they're going to be last in the division. Chicago, I think, is going to be better. What about I think Kansas Cleveland's going to be better. City. Kansas City, you know, I think they'll be okay. You know what about? They're not touching Cleveland. Tigers are finishing I last. I don't think they're touching Cleveland. The Tigers are going to finish last in the division this year. They got too many problems. Bullpen sucks. I'll tell you that much right now. They don't have a true closer. Their bullpen is terrible. I mean, in. I'm not finished fake news. <laughs> Are you calling me Trump? I mean, like, no, I'm calling you what? fake news. You call him Trump. Are you calling uh, me Trump? I think the Tigers will win. I think I think they'll be closer to 500 than no. a lot of people want. They will to not make the playoffs. I don't think they're going to make. And the playoffs. then I think that's going to be a long year. I think they're going to win maybe 60 games. But I could see them winning 75, 60. But I'm telling you, Ian, Tigers are going to finish last. Uh, the All Stars gonna make the playoffs, and when it's you wait, Cup, you say they're gonna the win. Michigan oh, yeah. State Spartans are gonna have a, re- a rebound season again. I think the Tigers in the first half are gonna be a lot closer than you expect. If and they then they're gonna are, trade Iglesias, they'll probably trade McCann. They might trade Nick Castellanos. They should trade. They might trade Michael Fulmer. Yeah, they might. They might not trade Michael Fulmer, depending on where they're at. The fire sale. Kind of. I mean, kind of. Al, Al Avila is I the horse general manager this. in sports. But I'm saying right now, Ian, is what? the Tigers are going to have a rough year. It won't be till about maybe five years. Five years. Then they'll be back. Don't see it. Don't see it. You think it's sooner? A lot sooner. No. All right, guys, you got any final thoughts on the Tigers? They're done for. They didn't even break camp. They're done for. So you think they're done for and you've got hope. I'm not hoping or expecting any playoffs or anything like that. But I think they're going to be better than what they were this past year. All right, what then. people expect. All right. That'll do it for this episode of Between Terminas. Um, we'll catch you guys again soon. Have a great, Have a great day. Have a great night. And see you soon. Bye. Thank you.